Nick here, M0NTV, and welcome back to my shack and to another homebrew video. Now today we are digging into the IF amplifiers. And once we've done that, pretty much the uh, IF section is completed. And I'm going to use a tried and trusted design that I've used before, which is the Termination Insensitive Amplifier, bi-directional, designed by Wes Haywood and Bob Kopsky. I'm not going to go into all the uh, design of that because I've done it before. In fact, probably one of the most watched videos that I've produced is about building this tier design. So I'll link to that video below. So you might want to go and have a look at that if you've not seen it. And I cover building it from scratch, basically. What I'm going to do is take a slightly different approach today, which is to use a PCB. I designed and had printed in China a whole load of my own boards based on Bob and Wes's design. Now, I should give a big shout out at this point, because I'm not certainly not unique in doing this, um, there is um, a wonderful home brewing ham called Todd, who has his own website, excellent website, called Mostly DIY RF. And Todd sells these incredible boards, um, like uh, the, uh, the tier boards, and he very kindly sent me a whole load of samples of his work. Really brilliant stuff. And so if you, if you don't feel up to designing your own, and um, and particularly if you want to, you know, kind of keep the size of, of your radios down, which is always a concern for me, then actually that's a really brilliant option. And particularly if you live in the US, I would really seriously consider um, uh, buying some stuff from Todd because he um, he produces all kinds of different boards. So it's certainly worth a look. So thank you very much to Todd. Please check out his work. But I thought, well, look, you know, I, I've i done this. I've done this before. I've designed uh, a PCB only once. So I thought I can knuckle down and do this. So I so I did. Uh, and so I produced um, these, which obviously are going to be a lot smaller. And, uh, and they work really well, as you will see. People have asked, when am I going to produce the video of, you know, how you design this? I used Autodesk Eagle. People use KiCad, which is another uh, free one. I'm not going to at the moment, mainly just because I'm not good enough to do a tutorial on PCB design. Uh, I just about scraped through myself <laughs> and made it work. What I will do is link to another excellent one by uh, George from the uh, Ham Radio Workbench, has produced a fantastic one. It's quite a long video, but it takes you from zero to hero in designing your own PCB. So if you're interested, and virtually everything I needed to know not quite everything, but virtually everything I need to know about doing this, I got from George's video. So uh, it, it's well worth a look if you want to go down that route. If you'd rather just Manhattan build them, then you can do and watch that other video I made, and you know, it's the same design. It just means that you can uh, fit more of them uh, together, because I can't Manhattan build anything quite as small as that. So what I want to concentrate on in this video is actually how I'm going to use this, and I'm going to do some different tests on this than I did previously. So um, I hope you find something of interest here, and I uh, hope you enjoy. So here is my board. As you can see, it's not very large. The great thing about designing a PCB is of course because you can you can squish all the components in over a much smaller area which is is great and uh, it appeals to my slightly OCD nature to be able to kind of <laughs> line all the resistors up and things like that but it is helpful because I've got uh, two different layers with traces on which is is useful and then the um, the the spare kind of copper on on your trace that's not being used to, for these uh, connections 
um, you can what they call flood fill it then uh, and it becomes the ground plane so for RF circuits that's that's really useful and makes it more similar to um, what we do really with Manhattan style on a on copper clad board and uh, yeah it seems to work pretty well so um so this is the thing and you see I've got some um, connections on either side for uh, SMA connectors that slide on there and you solder them on uh, but in truth I envisage in my radio uh, a lot of those will be hardwired coaxial connections but yeah so um uh, it, it took a bit of doing just to uh, to to get it looking symmetrical and whatever and making sure all your your traces weren't crossing and all the rest of it but um but we got there and uh, and it, as i say it seems to work uh, pretty well the the only real big mistake was i, I don't know what i was thinking but uh, these holes for the screws are about twice the size they ought to be so something went a bit wrong there but uh, if that was the only real faux pas in uh, in the making of this then that's not too bad and that's something i could correct in a future revision if i uh, decide to have uh, some more of these printed up right so that's what the board looks like and this is what it looks like when it's made up And so, yeah, here we are. So, uh, as you see, it, uh, it, it's all pretty neat and uh, not, not bad at all, really. Um, so, this is the basic amplifier. And obviously, it's just got one in and one out. And as you'll see in a moment, uh, it's very easy to make it bi-directional. You just get two identical ones and connect the in to the out and the out to the in. And, um, and that's pretty much it. So what we're going to do now um, is, first of all, we're just going to do some individual tests on, on just one of these modules. And, uh, and then we'll join uh, two modules up together, which is, is what I'm going to be doing actually in my radio, and see how that performs. So time for a quick test. Here is our module built for, well... 20 dB, a little over 20 dB, and uh, I'm going to hook it up to the spectrum analyzer and uh, see what gain we're getting and how uh, linear that gain is oh, and over what uh, frequency. So uh, I'm going to cut now to the uh, screen of the computer and you'll be able to see for yourself. So here is the screen my flashy spectrum analyzer has got its own LAN connection so I can kind of log into it through a browser and control the instrument which is brilliant and you'll you'll see it so at the bottom the pink trace with number two on that is just me connecting the tracking generator to the RF input on the spectrum analyzer and the tracking generator is running at minus 20 dBm and so you won't be surprised to see that's nice and flat across the bandwidth. So I'm testing this here from 1 megahertz to 50 megahertz. And the markers are set at my IF frequency, which is 13.3 megahertz. So when I power up the amplifier, we see this top line here. And you'll see that at my frequency of interest, I'm getting, well, 20.3 dBm of gain, which is brilliant um, and what I expected. And you'll see we get a bit more gain at lower frequencies, as you might expect, and then the gain tails off. At higher frequencies, that's probably due to the 2N3904 transistors. If I'd used transistors perhaps with a higher FT, then we'd probably get uh, better gain at higher frequencies. But yeah, for, for my purposes, that will be just fine. So, now, one test you can do for an amplifier 
is is a really useful one, but I confess it's it's not one that I've ever tried doing before, so I thought this is a good opportunity, which is to measure the 1 dB compression point. Now, this is the point at which your amplifier stops being linear. So for, for if you're increasing, say, the, the input signal by 1 dB increments and you get a corresponding output, there comes a point when you might put another dB in, but you don't get as much gain out. And actually, um, we'll see this um, for ourselves in a moment, uh, the, the gain starts to drop off and even reduce as the amplifier it goes into saturation mode. And once you get to that point, you're not in small signal mode anymore and you're into large signal territory. And, but crucially, you're going to get distortion, harmonics and all the rest of it that you have to deal with. So when you're building a small signal amplifier, it, it's good to kind of stay well clear of that. Um, and so you can keep everything nice and clean and linear. Um, but it's good to know where that point is. And that's what we're going to test. So all I've done is, let me just uh, get this to focus. Uh, I've hooked up the spectrum analyzer. And just for ease, I'm going to show you on the screen of the computer in a minute. But just so you can see, I've just all I've got is I've got the tracking generator on uh, here. Uh, and that's coming round here into the input uh, of the uh RF amplifier and then the output is just going straight into the uh, the input of the spectrum analyzer and I'll show you now what we're going to do on the screen of the computer. Right okay so the way that we test this is basically we need some way of measuring as accurately as we can the input and measuring the output of, of the amplifier. And really, we need to be able to put the input in in 1 dB increments. And this is hard. Um, I, I, this is one of the reasons why I've never done this test before. Um, because my signal generator doesn't is not calibrated for dB. Now, all right, I could work out exactly, you know, what 1 dB was and 2 dB, you know. And, and but that would be very fiddly because doing it, with peak to peak voltage. Um, one way you could do it, and again, this is something I haven't got, surprisingly perhaps, but is some kind of stepped attenuator. I did have a good building one once, but it never, I never finished it. But so, you know, you could put a more powerful signal in and then step it down or, or up. Um, so you could do that and, and then measure it. I haven't tried doing this on the, the tiny SA, but you quite possibly could. But you'd obviously need some kind of signal generator as well. Uh, so you could do that. I've got a, a spectrum analyzer that has a tracking generator that obviously does work in dBm, which is ideal. Now, it only goes down as far as minus 20 dBm. So that's what I'm going to do it. So I'm going to uh, go from minus 20 dBm to 0 dBm. But that's enough to show you what happens. So what I've done is I've, I've got the amplifier connected to the tracking generator and then the output of the amplifier going into the spectrum analyzer. I'm sweeping a one megahertz sweep. I'm centering it 13 megahertz just to keep things simple. So I'm going from 12.5, you'll see on the bottom left down here, megahertz to 13.5. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to measure, keep your eye on here on this where this marker is, which is on the 13 megahertz. We're going to measure what the figure is. That's measuring the gain at that point. And then we're going to alter the tracking generator level. So he says. <laughs> right, so at the moment, yeah, minus 0.52, say. So, um, and this is what I did. I've done this exercise before, but I'm just showing you what I did. Um, so you write that down, and then we're going to change it to minus 19, and you'll see the figure changes here, minus you know, 0.39, write that down, change it again, so we're going, so we're increasing the power, right, so we're up to minus 18 dBm now. 
uh, minus 17, 2.40, minus 16, 3.29, whatever. So you see the idea. So all I did is I, I got two columns in my notebook. I put the input uh, DBM and then a column for the output. And I just did this and wrote those figures down. Then I put those figures into a spreadsheet and produced a nice little graph and that is what I will show you now. So this is what I produced. So here's my little table here with the input power in DBM going from minus 20 down to naught. And here's the output power that I noted down from the screen of the spectrum analyzer. And then I just threw that into a graph and here it is. And so along the x-axis on the bottom, we've got the input power in dBm, and along the vertical y-axis, we've got the output power in dBm. And the blue trace is, is what was produced from the correlation of these input and output figures. And you will see very clearly, it curves. Now this black line here, this is the behavior of a perfect amplifier. And you will see that up to about, well, up to about minus 15, say, of, of input power, our amplifier behaves like a perfect amplifier. So in other words, it's linear. Uh, now, I should say that the, the amplifier that I tested here is not the same one that I did the other test on. I've built so many of these things. <laughs> so the gain's slightly different. But you'll see here... For minus 19 dB, we get about half a dB of output power. Right? So it's got about 19.5 dB of gain. So if we go minus 18 dB, you'll get 1.5, which is 19.5. If you go minus 16, you'll get 3.5, which is 19.5. You, you see what I mean? So it's linear. So we're, we're, we're increasing the the gain by 1 dB intervals and we're getting a corresponding uh, output power. And if that was perfect, it would carry on going on like that, you know, forever. But clearly it's not. And you reach a point at which our perfect line and our real line start to separate and diverge. And gradually you'll see that uh, as you, you're putting 1 dB amounts of input in, you're not getting the same output. And and it, it tails off until you get to this point at which it, it flatlines and then it actually starts to decrease. Now this is saturation. And as I said, for a small signal amplifier, you we want to be operating well below this level, but in, in this level really, um, before we get to it. But the critical point that, that we measure is this because each uh, of these vertical divisions is half a db so two two of these is one db we can measure quite easily what the one db compression point is because it's the point at which these lines are one db separation this red line is my one db separation and you'll see it it's here it's about minus 11 point Eight dBm. So minus 11.8 dBm is about 163 millivolts peak to peak. So in terms of our input to this amplifier, we want to be a lot less than that. And as I said, to keep it linear, it needs to be much less than that. So looking at this graph, probably, well, about minus 15 because up until that point, you can see we're completely linear. So minus 15 dBm, uh, that's about 113 millivolts peak to peak. So as long as we don't put more than 113 millivolts peak to peak uh, in it, we, uh, we should be okay. And that will give us an output, well, we can see here, of about 4.5 dBm. And 4.5 dBm equates to just over a volt peak to peak. It's 1.062 volts peak to peak, which equates to about 2.8 milliwatts. So that's the most you're going to get 
out of this amplifier without pushing it into compression and distortion. Uh, now, all right, if you you could say, well, I can I can I can squeeze more out of it and filter the the, the harmonics out. Well, yeah, of course you can, you can. But in the IF stages, particularly. I want to design them to be as naturally clean and, and free of distortion as, as possible. So that's what I'm going to be going for. So it's an interesting exercise to do. And as I said, it's, it's not one that I'd done before, but it's, it's quite cool, really, when you, when you can actually see this process and, and kind of see it happening in... Because uh, I've seen these graphs before, but to actually produce your own was quite satisfying. Um, and at least now I know what I can expect from this amplifier... And, uh, and what the, the kind of useful linear parameters of it actually are. So I just want to show you what I've done here, and this is the actual proper configuration I'm going to be using. So I've taken two of those PCBs that I built up, and in the documentation that Wes and Bob produce they give you some different choices for three of the resistors which will actually affect the gain that your amplifier produces and so I've built these two with different amounts of gain because I determined that I needed more gain on receive that's not surprising because you know it's a tiny signal that your antenna picks up and experiences loss through various stages filters and different stages of your radio so it's always going to need more amplification whereas on transmit because I'm going to be going through uh, a relatively powerful microphone amplifier that's got a compressor in it as well uh, you know, I don't need as much power on the transmit as I do on the receive. So, and you can have these modules strapped together with different gain values, and it's fine. So, at the bottom, you can probably just about see I've got RX on obviously on receive plus 20, it's about plus 21 actually dB. That's the receive one in on the left, out on the right, and on the top, which is upside down from our perspective. Is the is the plus fifteen uh, dB transmit amplifier? So that's in on the right, out on the left. And the great thing about these amplifiers is you you build them identically, and then all you do, and you can just see there, I've just got two little bits of um, RG one seven four. I think it is this thin little uh, fifty ohm coax just to connect the ins. To the outs and, and and that's it and then depending on whether you power up either the top module or the bottom module it will spring into life and you'll either have a signal going from left to right or right to left so that's the the idea of it and that's the the genius of this little circuit really so that's what it looks like so what we're going to do now is do a couple of tests to uh, to see how it works so we're going to put it through its paces and the first test we're going to do is the bi-directional test so let me just show you what i've got here so we've got the two modules and you'll see uh, there's two coaxial leads. So down here, I've got the SIGGEN set up to produce a sine wave at 13.3 megahertz, 100 millivolts, peak to peak. And at the moment, that is coming through this table here, and it's going around here, and it's going in on the right-hand side. So this is configured as though we were on transmit. Um, so that should be engaging then that top module, which is the 15 dB transmit module. And the output is coming out here and is coming down here through um, a 50 ohm load into the oscilloscope. Now, 
what you can also see are two red and black power leads. And these correspond to my bench power supply. Now the left hand channel is going to control the 12 volts bias for the transmit and the right hand channel is the 12 volts for the receive. So what I'm going to do now is actually switch it on and off. Now what I'm hoping we will see by focusing on the oscilloscope screen first of all I'm now so remember it's configured at the moment for, for transmit so I'm hoping when I switch on the right hand module we're not going to see anything because that's the receive power all right so here goes fantastic so that's there you can see is over there now but if I switch on the left hand which is the transmit yeah fantastic so that works uh, and we're going to swap it over and just test that it uh, it works the other way so now I've swapped the RF leads over. So now the signal is coming in on the left-hand side. So hopefully now this is going to travel through the bottom amplifier, which is the plus 20 dB receive amplifier, and then come out down here and go through the 50 ohm load into the oscilloscope. So let's see if that's going to work. So again, I'm going to start with the left hand one, which is the transmit. Hopefully, you're not going to see anything. Brilliant. Okay. And on the right hand side, this is switching on the receive. Yeah, fantastic. And obviously, as you'll see, uh, we've got a stronger signal there because it's a stronger amplifier. Uh, so that's um, about 21 dB going through that bottom amplifier. So yeah, the, the bi-directional switching um certainly works very well thank you wes and bob and the next test we're going to do is related to the other attribute of this amplifier because we've uh, ascertained that it is indeed bi-directional but the other thing of course is it is a termination insensitive amplifier which means that whatever is happening on the other port the port we're testing is always going to see, in our case, 50 ohms. And we're going to put this to the test now. So as you can see, I've got the Nano VNA connected to this left-hand port. And you'll see if I zoom in here at the moment, with no power on at all, we're seeing uh, an SWR of 2 to 1. Uh, if I flip the power and we configure it for uh, for receive you see it drops down to 1.13 which is great uh, and actually if I flip the power the other way as well it drops down even further 1.02 so um so definitely with we're, we're seeing a good 50 ohms on that port and no it's it's hanging there's absolutely nothing on that at all so that's very good uh, let's swap over the nano vna and let's test this right hand port so i've swapped the cable over now so now we're going into the right hand port and the left hand port is open circuit let's zoom in again on here if i can so you can see what's going to go on and we'll try again so this time yeah, 1.07, when I go that one and press the other one, 1.08. So that's really very good indeed. And just to say, uh, if we, I mean, I tested it with SWR, I could have used a Smith chart, but in case you're wondering, uh, that was last measurements, and I'm testing at... Uh, 13.250 I mean the whole sweep is from 1 to 50 megahertz I should have said and as you can see it's pretty flat across uh, all of that which is great but that um, 1.08 I think it was uh, SWR corresponds to an impedance 
of 53.3 ohms. So that is just wonderful. So that's going to be great. And because these amplifiers are going to be going either side of my crystal filter, um, it doesn't matter what the crystal filter is doing. I've got matching impedance matching transformers on both of the crystal filter ports, but even if it is a bit off, it's not going to unduly bother the rest of the radio because uh, these bad boys will make sure that, uh, that the other ports will see 50 ohms. Well, there you go. Now, I know what some people are going to ask. When am I going to sell these? <laughs> well, I'm not is the honest truth. Um, Todd's got a business and he produces professional quality boards. Mine are not professional quality boards. If you look at it, look at those milling holes for the screws. They're about twice as big <laughs> as they ought to be. Um, and so I didn't produce them to, to, to sell them or, or, or whatever. I just produced them for my own use, really. Um, now, if people are really interested, I could make the, the source files available um, but obviously you'd need to know enough about what to do with them. I mean, I can make the Gerber files available, but I think with the Gerber files, um, I'm not sure how easy it would be to edit those, to change things like the you know the diameter of those those screw holes and things like that. I'm not sure. This is the problem. I don't really know enough about it. Um, but if anybody's really interested, then I can let them have my Eagle files. Um, but as I said, you know... Um, the main thing is not actually the PCB, it's, it's what you're going to do with the actual circuit once it's built. And so what I did is built a whole load of these amplifiers and I've bunched them up together and put them together. There's one more module I need to build, which is coming in the next video, which is the microphone amplifier. And once we've done that, then we can put the whole of the IF section together and actually do some early transmit testing with the whole lot of it and to see actually how how that that works with all those different bits in the IF section and um, and the transmit one next time will be interesting because I made um, another video about this same design that I'm going to use because it uses a little um, uh, chip that gives us some audio compression but I learned something very interesting about that chip, which <laughs> throws into the air <laughs> a lot of what I talked about in the last video, actually. So if you're intrigued, good. And uh, that's coming in the, in the next video, which will be on the microphone amplifier. And some of the work that I've done since the last video I made on that um, uh, to try and make it work better and as it's designed to work. So, but until then, thank you ever so much for watching. Take care. See you on the next video. Bye-bye.